And, and, and the question is, can the Niners defend the run at the point? Baltimore couldn't. And Baltimore's mm-hmm. got Queen and Roquan and 360-pound Michael Pierce. And mm-hmm. they still ran Pacheco between the tackles in the lower red zone. And yeah. then and then the Niners, you know, if you run to the edges um, and you can climb to the second level and block Greenlaw and Warner, you can make big plays there. So that's where it starts. I mean, can mm-hmm. the 49ers stop uh, Isaiah Pacheco? If they can't, and Mahomes has has play action available all day and the ability to run, it's going to be very difficult to defend. They're I think have Kyle to take away Pacheco. I agree, Larry. I think Kyle, uh, Kyle's, Kyle's basic, you know, his number one mantra for this game, I feel as though it's spot on. Um, I know we're kind of going hardcore on the effort. Um, you know, because of the last plays that we saw basically over um, all of the playoffs. But really, I feel like what Kyle was really trying to hearken on was the stamina, the constant pressure that the defensive line is going to have to have. And I feel like the Kansas City Chiefs are going to make sure that we get we keep at least four to five down linemen. And they're betting on the fact that our offensive line is going to beat down their trenches, I, our trenches. I, I feel like they feel like they have a better offensive line than we have a D line. I feel like when you look at our D line, and when we have trouble, it's in traditional run fits. It's when teams just go downhill on us. That's it. When you get exotic. You want to go left? You want to go east and west on us? You want to start running to the sideline screens? We're that defense, right? We love the pursuit. We love the chase, right? We're that defense. But when you start going downhill on us, where there's really no there's really no pageantry or really any trickery or foolery or what we're doing, we're just kicking out. We're playing duo. We're gonna double your. We're gonna double that three technique. All right, and then we're gonna come off on a two way go on Fred or Dre, and we're gonna do it on the backside, and we're gonna keep doing it until you show us you have the technique to stop it. I feel like this. There's a there's a huge element of this game that's gonna be no, not really about the X's and O's, but more about the Jimmys and Joes. They're gonna try to put a hat on a hat on us. Well, and and Pacheco runs about as hard as anybody in in football. So yeah. I mean, and good luck. You know, if you don't bring it, he's he's you're gonna get a you're gonna get a knee in the chest. I mean, he's just he's a high knee guy. He reminds me a lot of Roger Craig. I mean, just a lot of there's just he a does. lot of energy in 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 the way he runs the football. And he's mm-hmm. you know he's a power back. And you're right. You're gonna they're gonna have to stop him. They're gonna have to stop Kelsey in the red zone. Um, the nice, I asked, uh, uh, Mooney Ward yesterday, what he thought of Rasheed Rice. And he said, he reminds him, he reminds him of Debo. Uh, he said, yeah, he reminds mm-hmm. me of Debo. He says, you gotta be real physical with him. Uh, he yeah. said, he said, reminds me of Debo a little bit. We just need to be physical with him all game long. So, and then, you know, the other thing here is the Niners do have the right kinds of pieces to potentially slow down Travis Kelsey. Um, mm-hmm. you know, but Kelsey and Mahomes are absolutely in lockstep. So they know where, you know, they just know Mahomes knows, you know, where Kelsey is. Kelsey knows where they just have so many reps together that it's a very difficult combination to stop. Oh my God. Cosmo with Cosmo's Cosmo's last pick is exactly how I feel about Rick- Isaiah Pacheco. I think I feel like he's Ricky Waters. I do. He does. He reminds me of Ricky Waters. Yeah. That's sudden, a good call. sudden, low he center of gravity. He, he doesn't catch the ball. Like he doesn't, he's ne- he's nowhere near the receiver Ricky was. But that almost kind of like, you know what? It's like Ricky Waters like started the running style. And I feel like Frank Gore like perfected it. You know, like that high knee, center, lower gravity, sudden cuts. Uh, not a slasher, but a cutter. Right, they still gonna stay. They still gonna always stay vertical, no matter what. What do you think? Um, are you, you know, are you satisfied with what the 49ers look like defensively in this matchup? Outside of, um, you know, the effort question. I mean, obviously, you got to play with effort. But right. what do you think of the matchup for the 49er defense against Kansas City? I mean, Kansas Mahomes this year, um, you know, showed that he was not just absolutely perfect he was a guy that had some struggles throughout the year but he man he has gotten it going late in the year and he's playing at a really high level suddenly but i mean 
it, you know, you go back to early in the year, this guy's 17th in the league this year in completion mm-hmm. percentage versus pressure, 48.6. He had 14 interceptions, but he's had zero in the last 20 quarters, the last five games. Can the Niners get a pick against Mahomes? and Or is Mahomes doing something in the last five games that maybe he wasn't doing earlier in the year? Well, one thing that I, I got fooled with, is I started looking at the last game that we played them five years ago in 2019. And what frustrated me about that was, is that I automatically tried to start marrying over the performances of, well, we had, we had Mahomes down two picks. Uh, <laughs> we had him down two picks. He put up 21 in the fourth and our defense was game. Um, I feel like he's come. He's not the same quarterback. He was the last time we faced him. Uh, I will say that they, they're a little bit, they're taking more of a page out of our book, in my opinion, as far as not being an offense that tries to always fit a square peg in a round hole because of this is what they do. But they've become smart enough and, and actually more savvy enough to be able to take whatever a defense is giving them on that particular day. I mean, what's emblematic of that is that they're not necessarily a strong running team. Right. They've had multiple multiple games where they've tried to get their passing game off the ground. But this group of guys that they have have they've been they haven't been up to snuff. It wasn't until they got to the playoffs until they actually started activating their running game. And I didn't even see this uptick of them being able to run the ball this strong. And you might want to say, yes, yeah, the playoffs and they're just trying to play because they know their backs are against the wall. But you can't fake the type of running game that they've had um, and the games that they've played. I mean, they've had two hard home. Um, they've had two hard road uh, road games and a home game. And they see Miami, Buffalo and the Ravens. And they ran the ball on the Ravens. And they they consistently ran the ball on the Ravens. And don't be fooled by yards. Don't be fooled by the box by the box stat, because running the ball is all about the effort and the intent to know that you still will run the ball on this team and you can get yards. Right? You don't need to run a hundred yards in today's league. You don't need to run for a hundred yards to sustain the run. You just need to run the ball hard and strong enough to be able to keep the defense honest for you to get to what you want to get to. That's what the Chiefs can do. I feel as though that the biggest thing, if we go back and look at the last game, we talked about Reynolds being the kind of like their big receiver that's uh, left out on the end, and we're going to see Reynolds on Ambry Thomas. I feel like we're going to see again with Justin Watson on Ambry Thomas. Valdez, Scantling, and C, uh, Mooney are going to be locked up this uh, pretty much the whole game. In the same way we we counted on uh, Amon Ross St. Brown to be locked up on Demo, it's going to be Rasheed Rice and Demo, right? So... I felt good with how Demo played against Amon Ross St. Brown. I don't think Amon Ross St. Brown is, I don't think Rasheed Rice is better than Amon Ross St. Brown, right? So if you're going to talk about a player that mimics Debo Samuel, you would look at Amon Ross St. Brown in some instances, and we more than had a good game, and I didn't feel as though that we were completely out of our depth with Amon Ross St. Brown, especially when Debo Sam with Demo. Uh, Diamador Lenore was on him. So I don't worry about him and Rasheed Rice going up against each other. The, now, where I do worry is them, is the Chiefs trying to uh, trying to single out Jair Brown and Travis Kelsey. It's going to have to be a hell of a game again from Dre Greenlaw and Fred Warner interrupted the task. I mean, Sam Laporta had a good game against them, but they, they corralled him enough they corralled him enough for, for him not to be able to take over the game. Now, for me, all of that's cool, but the biggest thing right now is stopping Patrick Mahomes from being able to get outside of the pocket and create downfield because that's when they come alive, right? When they played the Ravens, for all, for better for better or for worse, they really didn't do that much offensively against the Ravens. They were struggling to score. The Ravens' defense actually kept them in that game, right? It was the offense that kept sputtering out. But when they needed it, they were able to go deep downfield, and it happened off of plaster coverage and get series in and series out. Watch that Baltimore game. Those boys could not get to Patrick Mahomes. They couldn't sack him. They couldn't hit him. They couldn't get him on the ground. He bled out of the pocket. He was always getting downfield. And again, not a lot of scrambling, right? Not a lot of getting downfield and trying to kill him with yards, but keeping the play alive. And it 
gassed Baltimore defensively. We are going to have to have the game of all games from Nick Bosa, Chase Young, and uh, my man, Randy Gregory. Because yeah. if they don't have the edges on point this game, what's going to happen is, is that they're going to get down here with Isaiah, right, with Pacheco. And once they start getting a play-action game together and Chase Young has to start getting out in space and running, I mean, that's all she wrote. It'll become a backyard game. And uh, Wilk said it. Wilk said it yesterday. Not to interrupt. Wilk said yesterday, um, you know, the the key for us is to defend, be ready to, to defend two plays on every snap, right? The play that they call and then the play that Mahomes they creates. Yeah, they improvised. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what he does. I mean, that's really the strength of his game. And mm-hmm. and so, what does that mean? That means if you're playing zone, uh, Mooney said it. Hey, you know what? If they're playing zone and he breaks contain and he gets outside and he's starting to create create outside the pocket, you're going to have to have plaster coverage on your guy. You're going to have to go from your zone to basically playing almost a form of you know whatever you got to do. If that man means matched, you, yeah, whoever's in your area now you're playing man. You know, so yeah. it's like, you know, you got to hug up on these guys if and, and, it, and it puts a ton of pressure. And and he's right. The team that plays with the best stamina is probably going to, you know, probably win the game as far as it's going to take the D line to hustle. It's going to take the back end guys to defend two plays for every play. Um, and I think it's going to take the Niner offense, to be honest, you know, taking away the run game and making them a little one sided. Um, by, by, you know, scoring themselves and, and that's, you know, Brock said, Hey man, we got to get in the right mindset that he's like, we're really good when our backs are to the wall. Um, but you know what? We've not started fast and we got to get into that aggressive. We got to have it backs to the wall mindset in the first quarter instead of the third quarter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely agree with exactly, uh, the sentiment, uh, Really, it's not stopping the plays. It's not stopping the play that's actually called in the huddle, but it's the magic of Mahomes, him getting outside of the pocket. It's exactly what I talked about with the edges. Our D-line is going to have to really cause some issues. Right now, they seem as though that they're they're locked and ready to go. They're saying that Tooney is going to be a game-time decision, but outside of that— He didn't practice yesterday. Okay. Outside of that, you know— uh, they, they got an offensive line, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Creed Humphrey is pr- pretty much one of the best centers in the league. Yep. Uh, Trey Smith at right guard is a dog. And, you know, say what you want about Juwan Taylor, but he's another guy. And um, I kind of look at him in the same ilk as uh, the tackle that we went up against uh, in Green Bay, their, their fifth-round pick, uh, Tom. Zach uh, Tom. Yeah, he's, a, he's in the same ilk, nasty uh, but a little bit bigger, 6'5", 330, um, can get out and run. So uh, it's going to be on the trenches this game, really, uh, because if we, can't, if we can't get to Patrick Mahomes, then, you know, Patrick Mahomes is actually known for, for you know, not being blitzed, not, not being, being impervious to the blitz. That's what he does, right? He does not get sacked. Yeah, well, and, and he uh, can't, and he knows where to go with the ball. I mean, it's just you can't fool him with the blitz. I mean, Floyd the Barber says, "Larry, do you think uh, five man line would do against Mahomes? What do you think, Coach? What do you think of going with the five man surface and and maybe playing some man to man on the back end?" I think that's what they actually. I think that's what the Chiefs want us to do. I would I would go against that. They want us to get five linemen on the field because I they want us to deplete that defensive line. They know how we're built. They understand that the strength of this defense is the wave of the pass rush. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing in, since 2019 and on. Our most successful defenses had a pass rush, right? The defenses that have struggled have lacked in having a pass rush and being able to stop the run, right? So, you know, for what it's worth, I need to see us be able to get home with four. I started getting worried in the uh, in the Green Bay game because it was clear from the very beginning we could not get home with four. We had to start blitzing. Now, we're not going to have a guy like Jordan Love who doesn't necessarily have all of the reps under his belt, but we can show him things he hasn't seen before and count on him to throw against his body and give us a pick. We're going to be playing against a guy who is going to be looking at that pass rush and trying to get plastered coverage while our DBs are trying to play man match on the backside. So this is a game for the D-line. Nick Bosa is going to have to win. 
right? For what it's worth, I like their tackles, but Donovan Smith and Jawan Taylor are nothing to write home about as far as like upper echelon tackles, right? They these guys shouldn't we should get home being able to get out there. But again, the reason why they had Patrick Mahomes is because they don't need a Trent Williams, quite frankly. You know, they got Patty. They like we need a guy that's serviceable enough out there. We got to make them wrong in that instance. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be the game of all games from our D line, right? We can't. I mean, and also, uh, they have Tooney in right now. Uh, who do do you know who his backup is at left yeah, it's, guard? It's Nick Allegretti, who played really well. Um, I actually know Nick. I've had him on the show before. Really? Um, he, yeah, yeah. He's you know he's a. We had him uh, just randomly. We had him on during the draft the year he came out this is several years ago um and great guy i mean he's a illinois kid who was a great high school wrestler and he's kind of settled in as their interior backup so but he's been in the system for a number of years and when thuny couldn't go they plugged in allegretti at left guard and they didn't miss a beat i mean i mean it was they they just dominated up front he's a big bodied guy he doesn't have tons of uh, lateral quickness, but he's strong at the point. So, yeah, that's he's he's no gimme. I mean, it's not like uh, um, you know they they have a ba- he's almost like a starting caliber player, and mm-hmm. grades out really highly. So it's that's no that's no gimme that that even if if Tooney can't go or, or Thuney can't go in that game, uh, Allegretti looked really good. I mean, they ran the ball, um, you know, against Baltimore in the a gaps. So yeah. what, it wasn't like they ran it. They ran the it right into that, and that's that's what I'm saying. When they play us, I feel like Andy Reid has learned his lesson. Remember back, Philly Andy, and he he was on record for saying <laughs> this is wild now, but he was on record saying that if I could, I'd throw the ball every down. Remember he said that he's like I'd never run the ball if if it was up to me, we I'd throw every down. Yeah, he I mean, loves to throw. I mean, they throw. Yeah. yeah. And his and remember, like, even in the Philly days, uh, with Brian Westbrook, those boys out there, like, he he never had a running game. And that's what got him fired because he didn't have a running game in the NFC East in the early 2090s. And at that time, the NFC East was one of the toughest, was one of the toughest divisions in the NFL. And everybody had a run game. And now that he's with the Chiefs and he got shit canned and he's over there, he's starting to understand that I got to have some backs. I got to be able to slow the game down and be able to play the same game as these physical teams when I need to. I can still get to what I need to get to, especially with Andy Reid, in my opinion. Hall of Fame screen game. Nobody runs screens like Andy Reid. The best screen game in NFL history. But I feel like they are going to slow us down. They're going to try to get us to get five down linemen on the field. They're going to try to get us condensed in that box because they know that Patty can th- make any throw across the field. Now, with us on offense, I think that for us, we need to mimic them. We need to, they need to prove to us that they can stop our run game, honestly. Because right now, to me, the strength of what they do on defense is their, is their uh, secondary. They have an elite secondary. Everything else kind of goes downhill after that, right? But – for, for what they have in the secondary, we're going to have to get those boys physical. They're going to have to start tackling, not just getting in your back, not getting in your drop. We're going to have to get these boys to the line of scrimmage and feeling us physically. So um, I feel like this is going to be another game, almost as if uh, uh, we're playing uh, the Lions again. Whoever's first to be physical um, and sustains it is pretty much going to win the game.